Hi, it's Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. I have an amazing project for you today. It's the Jelly Roll Rug. I have never had so much fun being involved in a project as making this Jelly Roll Rug. We get these pre-cuts in, and of course, I'm always thinking about quilts, and I'm thinking about table runners, but RJ Designs came up with the Jelly Roll Rug pattern, and Roma, bless her heart, has given us permission to show you certain parts of how the rug goes together. Um, now the pattern is excellent. She has wonderful instructions, so be sure to get your pattern. Um, and this is one jelly roll makes this rug. And it was, as I said, an absolute blast. I'm completely addicted, and now I can't wait to make them out of this jelly roll and that jelly roll. So they make amazing gifts, and these rugs, are firm, you can walk on them, you can throw them in the washing machine, the dryer, and they will last, and they will last, and they will last. So this is so much fun. Um, now products have come out that make this pr uh, process even easier. Uh, Roman lets you know that you can cut either batting strips, and you would be actually taping those strips together. She uses a batting seam tape, or Bozel has come out with this catadin on a roll. It's basically the softest, most organic, lovely, wonderful strips that are already cut for you to two and a half inches, and this is 50 yards long. It'll take two of these to do one of the rugs and your favorite jelly roll, and of course, you'll be getting this pattern. Now, what we've decided to do to offer this as a kit for you is we're putting together two of the catadin rolls You'll be getting Roma's um, Jelly Roll Rug, that Jelly Roll Rug pattern. This is a kit, and then you'll simply pick your favorite Jelly Roll. We'll also be selling the Katadin separately, so when you want to make additional rugs, since you don't need to buy the pattern more than once, you'll be able to just get more of the two and a half inch strips and get your favorite Jelly Rolls. So we're making all of that available, and I love that Bozel came out with that, and this, it's the softest most wonderful thing and you know yes you could cut your own batting strips but then you're having to take them together with that seam tape and this just makes it more available to jump into the project and jump right into the sewing which of course i love that part so let's get started um as i said it takes one jelly roll now uh, and by the way, this is Emma's Garden from Maywood Studio. I love that collection. We have all kinds of pre-cut kits and beautiful kits we've designed here with that collection, so the rug coordinates beautifully with that. Of course, pre-cuts have limited life, so a lot of manufacturers will do them just one time as the collection is coming out. So if you do find a jelly roll you love, absolutely grab it. Absolutely grab one or maybe even two. Because I know uh, with Moda, for example, they typically have pre-cuts one time at the beginning of a collection and not again with that collection. So they do have limited availability. And again, grab those because you're gonna find so many projects to do with them. The one I'll be working on today, I don't know if you can see it on the overhead camera, is Detour Ahead. This is from Wilmington. Now, one of the things that Wilmington does is they offer their two and a half inch strip in two different uh, quantities. This is the 24 pack, um, and they also or, uh, offer a larger pack. We're carrying the 24 pack, so in this instance, you would need two of these to do one rug, and they actually make the rug just a little bit bigger because you'll be getting 48 strips versus most jelly rolls have about 40 to 42. Once you get ready to decide, you've decided what collection you want to use, you've got your pre-cut in front of you. Um, obviously, you know, let me just let me just say this as an aside. Let's say that, let's say you fall in love with a collection, but you can't get more of those jelly roll strips. You know that you can always cut your own two and a half inch strips and make your own jelly roll. So don't worry if if your favorite collection, you can't find those uh, jelly rolls anymore, you just make your own. So um, I opened up my package and I'm lit. first thing I'm gonna do is decide. In this instance, we said, you know, we really wanna have the green on the interior, have some white and come back with our dark purple on the outside. That's completely your preference, how you wanna lay your strips out. And as you can see, that's gonna determine how your rug's gonna look in the end. So step one is when you get your, uh, once you decide, you have your strips ready, make sure you have about 40 strips right in there, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less. Obviously a little bit less is just gonna have a smaller rug, a little bit more, you can have a bigger rug. Lay them out in the order in which you want them to appear. So I'm gonna bring this over a little bit more centered. 
this is going to be the center of my rug and my blue is going to be the outside of my rug. As you would expect, we need to just get those arranged. Then I'm going to stack these here. Just put these here. And then I need to sew my strips together. And you know, when I'm piecing a quilt block, I am very precise of how I splice things together, especially if I'm doing like a half square triangles. And here we just went for it. This is a rug, it's not a precise quilt block. So let me put that off there. Um, come to the sewing machine. So this is my first strip. So let's just put that, that's a little bit slippery there. Let's put that like that. Now my next strip, and I notice I haven't even taken off my selvage yet. I'm just gonna lay that 90 degrees to that. I have a normal straight stitch as you would expect. My stitch length right now is a 2.0. And I'm just gonna turn. Now I have learned that when I look where I want to end up, it's where I end up. It seems to be very consistent that when I just look here, this is where I end up sewing. All right, now this is the one I just sewed. So I'm gonna lay that like this and I'm gonna grab my next strip, which happens to be the same fabric. And this particular uh, pack from Detour Head by Wilmington, there are some duplicates and that's fine. You can either do that next strip or you could put it somewhere else. That arrangement of the rug is one of the fun things, I think, too, about the project is depending on how you arrange this, it's going to, of course, look different. Let me get that out of the way real quick. There we go. Don't want to sew that twice. So again, I'm going to look right here. And that's where I'm going to end up. Okay, let's do one more. This is my strip. Lay that down. And I'm just gonna change this up just for fun. I wanna get a different fabric. Let's do this one. Okay. You get the idea. Now you will do this for all of your strips, all 40 or however number of strips you have. You're gonna do this all the way down. This ensures it's gonna be in the order that you want. All right, now we are going to just do three strips. You get the idea. You would just keep going, keep going. You're gonna have a long, <laughs> that's a lot of strips sewn together. It's a lot of length. Put those down there real quick. So the first thing I'm gonna do before I do any kind of pressing is I'm just gonna go ahead and clip this, clip them apart and bring them to my mat. And I'm just gonna cut those apart. I'll use my quarter inch. Let's use this quarter inch here. Now you can bring this right to your pressing. Uh, your pressing is next. You can either just bring this to your ironing board or work on this table initially and we're just gonna repeat that. So you're just gonna cut those apart because of course you stain, chain stitched everything. Grab your four and a half by, I love this ruler. You know, I mean, I've got, of course I have different size rulers, but I don't need a bigger ruler than this. It's already taken up a lot of space. So having a ruler that really fits the, the job and the size that you need is just so ideal. So if you don't have any smaller rulers, this is a great one to have. I feel like I grab that ruler so much uh, because I do have limited space. I have a lot of things on the table all the time and I don't want my big ruler that I use to cut, you know, big width of fabric strips. 
All right, so you would go to, obviously we would have pieced everything together. We're gonna to go cut everything apart in that same fashion. Now we're gonna, uh, let's get our iron going. Now this is a step, we, we've made the rug twice. Something Tammy discovered when she made this, and she did an incredible job, didn't she? Good job, Tammy. I mean, she's incredible. Is she noticed she didn't use sizing on that. And on this one, she's using sizing and finding that it's coming out so beautifully flat, which of course you want that. So we really recommend the sizing. That's not, I believe that's not in the pattern. It's just something that Tammy discovered. And so I'm gonna pass that tip on to you as well. Um, whenever Tammy has a tip, boy, I'm listening because she knows. She finds very clever ways to do things and more efficient ways to do things and sometimes uses extra uh, products like sizing to make something come out even better than otherwise it, it would have otherwise. So we went ahead and we're going to size everything. Got our iron all going here. Seems because we want this to lay as flat as possible, as you might expect, uh, we want you to go ahead and press the seams open. I know Roma mentions that in the pattern as well, to press the seams open. So for that reason, my stitch length is 2.5 or shorter. Don't go longer than that because you are opening up that seam. So here we're coming up to a seam right now. And then I'm gonna show you how she recommends to kind of manage this big long piece of now joined strips into a, a very long piece of, of fabric. When you have, you know, 40 strips that are each 40 plus inches, that's a lot of length. So what she has you do, she kind of has you fan fold it. So you have, Put that here and kind of fold it back onto itself as you work. So it's a way to manage this. So again, you would keep sizing that. You saw that, press the seam open. And let me just show you the fan fold. Kind of put your finger there and you kind of go back and forth. And you go back and forth. And so it's a way to just kind of manage the fabric because you have so much of it. And you'll just go back and forth, back and forth, pressing your seams open, adding your sizing, et cetera, et cetera, so you have this whole thing in this nice stack. Then, typically when you move to the, um, move to the sewing machine, you're going to have this either on your lap, on the ground. It's, it's just a lot to manage. It's gonna, so what I'll be doing is moving the table next to me. But before we even jump into that step, the next thing we're going to be doing is we'll be using, I'm gonna use this one just to show it to you. Now she'll get you started. Roma's got great starting instructions of how you kind of get your strip started. But I want to show you how to manage the catadin, which is your batting strip, with this and the Wonder Clips. We found the Wonder Clips to be literally wonderful. They are so fantastic. I love how this is pre-cut and fits perfectly on the back of my two and a half inch strip. It's the precision of that is probably something in me <laughs> that I like very much. So as you can see, you're obviously putting that batting strip on the back of your fabric, fold toward the middle, fold toward the middle. Let me see if I can line that up even better. Fold to the middle. And now you'll just sandwich that and making sure that that is stacked, stacked exactly on top of each other, okay? Now, you would start this project actually a little bit differently, but I'm just showing you how to get the batting on the back of the fabric and how you keep the layers together before you move them to the sewing machine. Let me show you one I've actually started already with this. And it might be easier for you to see it this way. I've started wonder clipping it. The other thing she had you do, as you start sewing this together, it's this thing. It's like this big long thing. She has you start rolling it up. I told her my cat, my cat would love this thing. Um, you start kind of rolling this up so it's manageable. So you can see how I've wonder clipped that. Let's, let's do this again. It's back here, tucked in, tucked in. 
make sure when you fold this, that top portion is stacked exactly on top of the bottom portion. And we recommend wonder clipping and not pinning. As you can imagine, this is a lot of pins, if it was pins, and you're gonna be poking yourself, those pins may be coming out. I love the security of the wonder clips. They're easy to take out, no one's getting poked, and they're fun. I love the colorful ones and they're just wonderful to use. They're a wonderful alternative to using pins. All right, so as you can see, you're gonna clip as far down as you can until you run out of wonder clips. Then you'll take it to the sewing machine. You're gonna be using a standard quarter inch seam allowance. You may want to reduce the pressure on the, on the presser foot itself if your machine can do that. Um, this is a lot of bulk moving under the machine. Now, the Bernina has the capability of reducing the pressure on the presser foot itself, but if your machine doesn't, no worries at all. But you might want to look ab about that if it's possible to do that on your machine. Now, at home, if I was sewing this sitting down, which of course I would be, I would be putting this strip set on the ground and the catadin on the ground. In this case, because I'm standing, I'm just gonna move it, the table next to me. And I think we can manage it this way. So let's move that over here. As you can imagine, this takes up a lot of space. So make sure wherever you're working, maybe a dining room table, you have lots of space and have the table cleaned off because as you move this project around, you start, it's gonna clean off your table if you haven't already. So let's put this on here. Let's bring that to our machine. Get my table closer. The table works pretty cool. We were doing this in the sewing room sitting down. I haven't done this standing up and it's actually very manageable to have it on a table next to me. I'm going to put my wonder clips right here so as I'm taking them off I can just put them in there. And now I'm stand sewing a standard quarter inch seam allowance. I just picked a thread that I thought might look best with all of the different fabrics. Let me back check that just a little bit. And I'm making sure that that top roll is on top of the bottom roll. If you find it scoots out, stop and rip it out and go back. Don't keep going. You don't want this rug to fall apart over time because it's going to be walked on, it's going to be used, it's going to be washed, it's going to be dried. So you'll just keep going. Of course, this Bernina handles it beautifully. and you'll just keep going. So I'm just gonna uh, cut my stitch right, or cut my thread right now because I wanna show you the next step. Here, it's no mystery. I'm gonna sew until I run out of wonder clips and then I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna fold more of the batting to the back of the fabric, wonder clip, and sew again until I'm all the way at the end, roll this up and make my nice big ball. Okay, we've already done all that. Now, I want to show you, I'll need to switch presser feet real quick, because now you'll be using a zigzag stitch. And I believe Roma suggests a 5.5 in width, I believe. Um, and it's in here, I believe it's a 5.5, and it might be a 2.2. What I, I love how she gets that specific, where she tells you even things to that, to that degree. I know it's programmed in here, so let me look at let me look at the actual um, setting on that. Now I'm going to go ahead and release. This is my dual feed on my Bernina. I'm going to change this presser foot real quick. I love the quick release on the Bernina. It makes changing presser feet just a snap. And this Bernina 770 actually knows what presser foot is on here, which I love that too. Okay. So it's a 5.5 in width, the length is 2.0. We've already started our rug, I better move this over here because we're gonna need some more space so I can show you how this works. I'm just do a little bit of rearranging here and you'll be doing the same thing, you just need to make space. This 
bring our machine over more. Okay, so she, Roma recommends once you have your ball, you might want to put that in a basket. So I brought a basket with me today, and I'm just going to put that in there. Okay, so I'm going to take this off so that I can, it'll, it'll release as it needs to. This step here, we've already started our rug, and it's going. So I just want to show you how, I'm going to put this actually down with me, because I need it to be in front of me. You don't need to pin here. You don't need the wonder clip here. You're just going to start sewing and lay this. Now don't tug on this because if you pull on these strips, when you kind of relax them, your rug is gonna maybe have a little bit of a ripple or an accordion In fact, You're just laying that next to it with no pressure and letting the machine do the work for you. So let's start sewing. I'm definitely going to back tack and I'm just laying that next to it. So I'm not pushing, I'm not pulling, I'm just letting the machine use that zigzag to draw those layers together and secure them. Look at that. Look at that, how fun is that? And then you will simply continue all the way around and again, Roma's awesome instructions tell you how to finish your rug. So if you've never done something like this, I hadn't before and it's absolutely a blast. So I encourage you to grab your favorite jelly rolls, grab that catadine, grab this amazing pattern. These make wonderful gifts and they're wonderful for your own home. So thank you for letting me share the jelly roll rug pattern with you today.